the island of the dead, where spirits dwell and nightmares come to life. It was a crisp autumn morning when the students of Meadowbrook High School gathered at the harbor, preparing for their much-anticipated school trip. The destination, a mysterious island that had long been the subject of chilling tales and whispered rumors. The Island of the Dead. As the ferry pulled away from the mainland, the students gazed out at the island silhouette on the horizon. It was shrouded in mist, with jagged cliffs rising ominously from the roiling sea. The air grew colder, and a sense of unease settled over the students like a heavy fog. Among them was Jenny, an inquisitive and brave girl with a penchant for adventure. She had always been drawn to the mysteries of the world and this trip promised to be the ultimate test of her courage. Beside her was her best friend, Mark, a skeptic with a quick wit and a knack for finding logical explanations. The island loomed larger as the ferry chugged closer, revealing dilapidated structures that seemed frozen in time. The eerie silence was broken only by the distant cry of seabirds and the creaking of the vessel. It was as if the island itself held its breath, waiting for the unsuspecting visitors. Stepping ashore, the students found themselves in a desolate landscape. The air was heavy with decay, and the once vibrant vegetation had withered, creating a haunting backdrop. A worn sign read, Welcome to the Island of the Dead. Their guide, Mr. Thompson, a weathered man with a solemn expression led the group through the overgrown paths. He recounted tales of the island's tragic past, stories of shipwrecks, mysterious disappearances, and unexplained phenomena. The students listened intently, their imaginations ignited with a mix of excitement and fear. As they explored further, they stumbled upon an abandoned school building. Its walls were covered in layers of peeling paint, and shattered windows cast eerie shadows on the decaying floorboards. Mr. Thompson cautioned them not to venture inside, but curiosity got the better of the students. Jenny, Mark, and a few of their friends cautiously stepped over the threshold. The air inside the building was heavy with a tangible presence. Their footsteps echoed eerily and whispers seemed to drift from the dark corners of the empty classrooms. As they wandered deeper into the school, the atmosphere grew more oppressive, the temperature dropped, and their breath hung in the air like ghostly apparitions. Suddenly, a door slammed shut with a resounding thud, trapping them inside. Panic set in, and the students frantically tried to open the door but it remained stubbornly shut. The darkness seemed to close in around them, suffocating their senses. From the corner of their eyes, they caught glimpses of shadowy figures darting through the halls, their laughter echoing hauntingly. Whispers filled the air, growing louder and more menacing with each passing moment. The students clung to one another, their hearts pounding in their chests. But amidst the chaos, Jenny noticed something peculiar, a flickering light at the end of the hallway. Driven by a mix of curiosity and desperation, Jenny led her friends toward the flickering light. It led them to a small room, barely illuminated by a single, feeble candle. The room was adorned with eerie drawings, etched into the walls with a blood-red substance. As the students examined the drawings, a voice resonated through the room, a voice filled with anguish and despair. It told the tale of a curse that had befallen the island centuries ago, when the indigenous people were massacred by colonizers seeking to claim the land. The spirits of the slain had remained trapped on the island, haunting its every corner. The voice warned the students that the island was cursed and that they must leave before it was too late. But before they could react, the room was plunged into darkness. The air grew thick, suffocating, and the students felt a cold hand brush against their skin. They ran out of the room, 
their hearts pounding in their chests. The whispers grew louder, the shadows more menacing. The students could feel the spirits closing in, their malevolent presence palpable. Just as they reached the exit, the door flung open and missed her. Thompson appeared, his face pale and drawn. He motioned for them to follow, and they ran as fast as they could through the overgrown paths and abandoned buildings, all the while feeling the spirits hot on their heels. Part 5 The Final Confrontation They finally reached the shore, where the ferry waited for them. As they climbed aboard, the spirits howled with rage, their voices echoing across the island. The ferry pulled away, and the students looked back, relieved to have escaped the island's grasp. But their relief was short-lived. The ferry suddenly lurched, and the students were thrown to the deck. The air grew thick once more, and the students could feel the spirit's presence all around them. As they looked up, they saw a figure emerging from the mist. It was the spirit of a young girl, her eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. She spoke to them, telling them that they could never escape the island's curse. They were marked for life, bound to the spirits forevermore. The students could feel the spirits closing in, their malevolent presence palpable. But then, something strange happened. The spirits suddenly recoiled, as if pushed back by an invisible force. And in that moment, the students knew that they were not alone. They had a guardian angel watching over them. The fairy finally pulled away leaving the island and its spirits behind. But the students knew that they would never forget their harrowing experience. The island of the dead had left its mark on them, and they would never be the same again. As the ferry pulled away, the students couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. They looked back at the island, but it was shrouded in a thick fog, obscuring their view. The hairs on the back of their necks stood on end, and a chill ran down their spines. Suddenly, the fog lifted, revealing the island once more. But it was different now. The buildings were crumbling, the trees were withered and dead, and the air was thick with the stench of decay. The students could hear screams and moans, as if the spirits were still trapped on the island, wailing in agony. As they looked closer, they could see figures moving in the mist. They were the spirits, angry and vengeful, their eyes burning with hatred. The students felt their grip on reality slipping, and they were engulfed in a sea of darkness. When they finally came to, they were back on the mainland, safe and sound, but the memory of the island lingered, haunting their dreams and causing them to wake up in cold sweats. They knew that they had experienced something beyond explanation, something that would stay with them for the rest of their lives. From that day forward, the students avoided talking about the Island of the Dead. They couldn't explain what had happened, and they didn't want to relive the terror they had experienced. But sometimes, late at night, they could still hear the whispers and feel the chill of the spirit's breath on their necks. And they knew, deep down, that the Island of the Dead was still out there, waiting for its next victims. Years passed since the students tripped to the Island of the Dead, but their experiences there never truly left them. Some went on to lead normal lives, while others succumbed to their nightmares and paranoia. But all of them shared a deep fear of the unknown, and a feeling that the island was still out there waiting to claim them. And then, one day, a new group of students from a different school decided to visit the island. They had heard about the legends and rumors surrounding it, but dismissed them as superstition. They were young and fearless, and nothing could deter them from their adventure. But when they arrived on the island, they realized their mistake. The buildings were in ruins. The trees were dead and the air was thick with an unnatural fog. They felt a cold hand on their shoulders, 
and heard whispers in their ears, telling them to leave before it was too late. But they didn't listen. They pressed on, determined to explore the island and discover its secrets. And that was when the spirits emerged from the mist, angry and vengeful. The students tried to run, but the spirits were too fast. They surrounded the students, their eyes burning with fury. The students could feel their grip on reality slipping as the spirits dragged them down into the depths of the island. Their screams echoed across the island as the spirits exacted their revenge. The students' bodies were never found and the island was left untouched once more. But the whispers continued, warning others to stay away from the island of the dead. And so the legend of the island continued, passed down from generation to generation. No one dared to set foot on its shores again, for fear of suffering the same fate as those before them. And the spirits of the island of the dead remained, trapped in their eternal torment, waiting for their next victims to claim.